Hey everybody, this is Abby from Realistic Kitchen and Gardens. Today is Friday, December 22nd, I think. Uh, Friday before Christmas. And we're doing another garden tour. Um, raspberries are thoroughly dormant. Most of their leaves are gone. Um, there will be some cold damage on these um, tips, obviously. Um, but they'll spring back in the spring. I'm not that worried about them. Um, I have to admit, I'm really impressed with this rosemary, which is ARP rosemary from Territorial Seeds, which I bought as a, um, I think it was a four inch pot live plant. Um, and I got it at the end of May, transplanted it out and it's put on a decent amount of growth. The most significant is this one long spike, but I've been trimming the pieces along the side, like down here. I've been trimming these so that as the plant gets bigger, it won't just overlap itself a lot because um, these things need um, airflow too. Lilac is thoroughly asleep, fully budded, ready to go for spring. Um, last year I only had uh, four flowers, I think, which were up here, one of these. So we'll see what happens with it. And then I'll head over to the herb garden, which is right over here. We've been having quite a mild week this week from, uh, you know, the, the weird El Nino stuff. Um, time as usual does not care about winter oregano. Sometimes it'll die down, sometimes it won't. Um, this is a second or third year plant and I'm amazed at the number of flowers this thing put off. Um, and even in the, um, even as how cold and windy and blistery it's been, this is so nice and fragrant still. I'm really surprised this parsley is still alive. Um, I seeded this in a pot back last, I think January or February, um, and it took 17 days to germinate which, uh, you know, for parsley is about par for the course. Um, but it's gone through so many multiple hard freezes, snow, and the center parts are still in decent shape and even pushing up new growth. So I'm really impressed. I'm gonna have to look at the variety of that, but I believe it's giant flat leaf. I'm gonna have to look. Um, the carcasses of Genovese basil and summer savory are still there and um, I'm expecting to see seedlings from these up in the spring. I mean I haven't harvested any of these seeds and this is how you get seeds from basil. See if I can find one for you in these little blossoms. Probably not because I want to. Nope, oh, there's one. The black seeds in there. Those are basil seeds. So they may very come up just like that which is how nature normally does. That may very well actually be cilantro. I put a cilantro plant in here once upon a time and they, you know, do their certain things. Um, whorehound as usual, doesn't care. Um, extremely hardy plant, also called white whorehound because as you can see, the white tinge to it. Um, original remedy for, I believe, cough. Uh, winter savory. Eh, it's fine. Chives have died back, as they do, and uh, the other bunch of thyme I have. Um, this is chocolate mint intermixed with, that looks almost like either a parsley or a poison hemlock, and these little teeny stringy bits right here, that's mint right in the center. That's the parsley and or hemlock. I'm going to assume it's hemlock because that's what it does here. Um, and that really stringy bit is actually chamomile, which came from that plant right there. In this bed is where I sowed, I'm pretty sure this is the original bunch of um, cilantro I put in. There's that one, that one, and that one that also came up as volunteers. I think I put dill in here originally, but it wasn't as cold hardy as I thought, and those seedlings died off, you know, as it does. 
Um, and these are the winter lettuces. Uh, I think they call it ice butter, ice something, something with the ice. It was a free, free seed sample from um, Baker Creek, also called rareseeds.com. Also comically, there is some more baby chamomile because chamomile does not stay where you plant it. That was my peppermint and it's coming back. Uh, peppermint, the fuzzy mint peppermint. You can see the mint around the edges, around the edges, and there's all the chamomile. So I will not be hurting for chamomile. Um, and also a lot more of that, whatever it is, parsley, poison hemlock, whatever it wants to be, because, you know, what else is new? Green manure, doing great. <laughs> Growing grass. Um, there's also field peas. This is hairy vetch. Um, and as I say every time, I'm pretty sure this is oats, but I have no idea. And these are just meant to be chopped down and tilled in in the spring for green manure. And that, I know, I'm fairly certain, is actually poison hemlock. But it's so difficult to tell from parsley, carrots, and poison hemlock because they're all very closely related. Um, you can really only tell by the taproot, which based on this, I would guess it is poison hemlock because they get a really big taproot really fast. But this doesn't have any purple on it yet, but poison hemlock has little purple splotches on it. Anyway, carrying on. Chives again dying down. And these were green onions I stuck in the ground just for fun to see if they would keep growing. And they want to, they want to keep growing but they are so soft and mushy and cold damaged. That one may make it, but this is completely dead. This is hollow and flat and dead. That one wants to too. So it wants to. Chickens still doing their thing, right Leo? He looks so good after he came in from his molt. Um, he's, he's just coming up on a year. He doesn't even have his full spurs, but he's supposed to be, um, either an Easter Egger or an Americana. You can see the blue legs, the beard. Um, he's such a good rooster though. I've been feeding a 16% um, feed compared to the minimum 14%, and I think it helps them out. They're still laying. So anyway, carrying on. Um, garlic, I have five varieties of garlic. And this one, again, we're in the week of, um, warmth, weird warmth, like it's 45 degrees today. Um, but this keeps springing up and the greens are pretty hardy too. Um, that's one variety. I don't see any of this variety popping up and it usually doesn't. Usually they pop up, get hit by frost, the greens die off and then they come back in the spring. But these ones are so hardy. I'm so impressed this year. And maybe it's because I have um, rotting grass on it, which um, will produce some heat. There's a bunch in this one. If only my labels hadn't bleached to sin. <laughs> so helpful. Yes, yes, I know. Again, here's the side-by-side -side endlessly of covered with cardboard before seeded and then just roughing up the ground, of course, with Ohio clay. Um, but both of these are um, the same thing. This is, I think it's called soil breaker. It's a combo of tiller radish, which I showed you guys a picture of recently of the radishes climbing above ground because they're daikon radish. So that's kind of how they present. Um, I believe this is oats as well, or it's rye, one or the other. Field peas. Um, there's hairy vetch. I'm pretty sure in here. I don't know. Um, and then this is the set of, <laughs> you can see, I don't know if it comes through very well on the camera, but you can see footprints through here. I have deer that are harassing that kale right there and I'll show you in a minute, but they're just stepping everywhere and ruining everything. Um, by the way, catnip will live through winter. <laughs> That was a little nub that survived my pruning and cleaning and stuff, and it's 
still there. Um, but these are overwintering onions. I seeded them in, I think, July. So there's red. You won't be able to see it well on camera, but those are red. And then there's two little rows of high keeper. And these are meant to be extremely long day variety. Um, I had good luck with growing onions from seed last year. Last year I did, um, there's another one. Um, this one has died off just flat and sad, which does happen. I mean, I didn't mulch these. I'm just being a slacker with these. So I'm surprised they're doing as well as they are. It just kind of attests to how hardy they really are. Um, but last year I did uh, Juanita yellow onion um, and Red Bull. Red onion, obviously. That is more adult poison hemlock. Might as well show you a decent specimen of it if I can pull it out. Mm, that one doesn't have the purple. Eh, it has a couple. If you look at it right here, you can see some of the purple splotches, but unfortunately they look remarkably similar to carrots unless you have carrot greens side by side. Anyway, um, Red Express, which is doing abysmally, and Green Express, which is doing just about as well. I mean, I haven't been covering these. I've been really lazy. I haven't been covering these. I've been kind of letting them do whatever's happening. That is a pretty firm head, but there's so much cold damage. I mean, look at these, look at these sad leaves. There's plenty of layers, but I mean, between the um, slug damage and the cold damage, these are supposed to be 55 and 65 days from seed to harvest, and it just ain't it. I mean, that's kind of what happens when you uh, do overwintering crops. That one's really soft. Not soft, but it's not firm. That one's basically hollow. These are the last two in the row, and that direction is hmm, north. That's due north. So this is the northmost cabbage, and this is the biggest and in best shape that I may want to actually harvest. And I can actually see this. I can see it from this angle from the kitchen, and it looks good from the kitchen, but then I come out here and it's just like... <sighs> um, I've torn out most of the other broccoli. This was all um, heading broccoli waltham, waltham heading broccoli. This is the last one, and this is the biggest one I had gotten from any of them. Um, my chickens enjoyed eating the plant stems, and that's what they think they're going to get, which you're not. Um, where is it? Stinging nettle is still here. Catnip has died down a bit. This is the catnip. Um, this half the garden still is empty and will continue to be empty. Um, God, I still haven't released that video of my plan for next spring, but, um, there's something in the works and I'm trying to decide when to release that. This is where my, um, Peppers were sweet peppers, long gone, long, long gone. Um, Swiss chard, surprisingly alive. The only, this was an accidental double planting. You can see the pink stem on this one and I guess that's green compared to pink. Um, so these two are closely planted. There were two more here, but they've long since died off. But you can see the deer just come and chomp my kale off. Chomp, chomp, chomp. I think, I can't, uh, I must have harvested from this one for my lunch. But they nub this right down to the, surprisingly, they don't just eat the whole stem. I would think they would just take the whole stem, but they know to only take the, <laughs> leave some, to leave some to come back. Turning right around to um, purple sprouting broccoli from Gurney's. I expected this to be a spring harvest, but I have gotten a couple heads from it. They're small. I mean, these are meant to be more like little florets than true heads. And this plant, these plants have done pretty well. I've just been abysmal at keeping them um, upright. 
<laughs> this is probably the most upright one. And I'm so impressed with how um, cold hardy they are. Again, everything's affected by how um, cold and how eh, technically little light there is. I mean, the days are so short now. This was a basil and a hot pepper. And then these are Long Island Brussels sprouts, which have very thoroughly, uh, technically they'd be called bolted. This is bolted where it just opens up. And that is what they call lodged. It's just flopped down. This one I harvested most recently. Um, and I harvested the majority of this one for the most recent crop. But these ones still have a good number of sprouts on them. Um, the very top ones are kind of loose, but these little sprouts are so rock solid and firm. If I can leave them out here long enough, since I obviously don't care about the cold, I can certainly harvest them when they get big enough. <laughs> I love all this chickweed. My chickens love all this, this plant carpet. This is an edible plant called chickweed. And it's just a very kind of like iceberg lettuce-y. Like it's, it's nothing, nothing exciting. There's a good view of it too. Nothing exciting. It's just fresh and green and juicy, but another big carpet of it. I could let my chickens out and eat more of it, but I don't care that much flash. It's a lot of work to bring that netting out, but so, uh, the garden is still slowly functioning even around Christmas time. So if you like this kind of stuff, please like comment and subscribe and follow my chaotic Facebook page for more realistic kitchen and gardens. Say bye Leo.